What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and welcome back to another video where I just talk about the news. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at possibly the most unlucky NFL player in the world currently. I'll be giving you one final update on Saquon Barkley. We're going to find out who the new richest man in football is, which will probably change by the time this video is uploaded. We're also going to be diving briefly into basketball just to take a peek at Bronny James Jr. and his current incident, as well as a couple other things as usual. But before we start the video, as always, we gotta run through the plug. So don't forget to use code Wyatt's World on G Fuel or Prize Picks. Using my code on G Fuel will save you a discount on any of their products, and my code on Prize Picks will match up to $100 of your first deposit. You can also use code Wyatt10 to save yourself a discount on any Waggle merch. Link is in the description. Anyway, I'm done talking now. Let's get into today's events. So starting off this video, why don't we take a peek at the most unlucky NFL player in the league right now, and it is none other than Buffalo Bills running back Naheem Hines. For those who haven't heard, Hines got in a freak accident this weekend that is going to take him out for the entire 2023-2024 season. Now what's unfortunate about this is two different things. One of them is he just had a contract restructure, so that's probably going to ruin some part of that, and for two, he had absolutely no choice in this injury. Hines was reportedly sitting stationary on on a jet ski and was struck by another rider. Thankfully, he did not sustain a, you know, life-threatening injury, but he damaged his ACL and his knee, which, like I've said for the third time now, is going to cause him to miss the whole year. Like, come on, man. He was just being a person. He's just on a jet ski in the summer. He wasn't even driving it. He's just sitting on it. Like, how unlucky can you be? He's doing nothing wrong, and he just gets hit by another person. Unbelievable. All right, moving on to the next topic, we have got a Saquon Barkley update, and finally, it is good news. He has signed a one-year deal with the Giants. Yep, it's true, it happened, and the source is the NFL. Now, I know people are rolling their eyes and kind of giving him shit for it, because they're like, really, you made a big scene over a million dollars? Well, uh, three things happened here with Saquon, and every single one of them I, I applaud him for. One, he got what he wanted. He, he got more money than he was supposed to get, so he at least got a W there. Two, he plays football in New York. Do you know how much New York taxes you? You probably don't because it's a fucking shit ton. It's like half your income. And three, he clearly just wanted to be back with the team. And I mean, I've heard that on several other reports too. Like this wasn't about a guy who wanted to become the highest paid player in the league. This is a guy who wanted to get his voice heard and he wanted to get paid for what he did last year more than the team was going to give him, but not to the point where he was going to, you know, hold the team hostage, put him into a scare and not go to training camp. The guy clearly wants to be with this team. He clearly wants to play. He got what he wanted. I think he deserved it. And giant fans, you guys deserve a nice rest. All right, up next, we've got another surprise one-year contract. It's actually a return to the NFL. It's Jimmy Graham going back to New Orleans. Yeah, he's coming back to play, I guess. I don't know. At first, I thought it was a one-day contract for, like, you know, official retirement. No, he, he wants to go again. I mean, that's good for him, I guess. The guy's like 80 years old. I don't expect him to do anything at all. But I'm sure he'll have, you know, one game where he gets three touchdowns and wins somebody a fantasy game and causes the other person to break their phone and ruin their whole friendship. Not that I'd know anything about losing in fantasy football because of Jimmy Graham! All right, and now we will be moving on to three big contract extensions that happened over this weekend. And one of them, we now have the new highest paid player in NFL history. I always say it like that because it's a fucking slogan after every contract now. Nobody cares about anything other than becoming the highest paid player. So the first contract extension we got was the Giants extending left tackle Andrew Thomas to a five-year, $117 million deal. Holy cow, now that is a pile of money. But honestly, I mean, considering that he is probably one of the best offensive tackles in the league, and I hear that a lot from you guys, and I trust you, it's definitely going to be worth it because protection for your quarterback, I've said this a million times, is also protection for your running back. I mean, people really underrate how, how great, you know, one elite offensive lineman can really change your offense. And this, for New York, I think was a success. Next up, we have the Cowboys extending cornerback Trayvon Diggs to a five-year, $97 million deal. Again, I think it's worth the money there. I know people like to bring up that he gets burned in coverage all the time, and maybe he does. But he's also one of the biggest playmakers when it comes to being a defensive back in the league. Kind of like Richard Sherman, man. Remember him? He never was a man-to-man -man guy. He stuck to his zone. He stayed on one side of the field. People like to give him shit for that. I still do, but it doesn't take away from the fact that Richard Sherman was still an absolute demon and one of the greatest cornerbacks to ever play play football. And yeah, I know Trayvon's not a zone guy, but it's just an example that you, you can't take one flaw and let it blind you from the elite talent he possesses. Especially 
especially when the stats are there to back him up. They're good for Trayvon. And lastly, we've got the new highest paid player in NFL history. It is none other than Justin Herbert. He has signed a contract for $262 million over five years. It's like $52.5 million a year or something crazy. Good for him. I'm not even going to get into if he deserves it or not, whatever. The quarterback market's totally fucked. But Joe Burrow is going to get probably $280 million, I would guess. $270, bare minimum, but jeepers, creepers. And then after that, we're going to have Trevor. Holy smokes. All right, next up, I'm gonna possibly step into some very dangerous territory, but I know everyone's gonna ask me why I didn't talk about it in this video if I didn't talk about it. So let's talk about Jordan Addison's incident. For those who haven't heard about that, Jordan Addison, who was the Vikings first round pick this year, was caught going 140 miles an hour in his Lamborghini at three o'clock in the morning. However, then a couple days later or a day later, it comes out with an update that Jordan Addison was going 140 in the zone because he had a medical emergency regarding his dog at home. Look, I didn't want to bring this up because what I'm going to say is probably going to get some people mad at me, but I call bullshit. I call bullshit. All day, all night, I think he's lying. Now, do I care? No, not really, but I call bullshit. I think that was a horrible excuse and I don't believe him. I don't care if I sound cold hearted or not. I'm an honest man. You know this. All right, now briefly moving into the NBA, let's take a peek at LeBron James Jr. Incredibly scary stuff here. LeBron James Jr. suffered cardiac arrest while practicing at USC on Monday. LeBron James confirmed the scare involving his son as he prepared for his first season with the Trojans in a statement to TMZ. Monday while practicing, Bronny suffered cardiac arrest. Medical staff was able to treat Bronny and take him to the hospital. He is now in stable condition, no longer in ICU. However, we ask for respect and privacy for the James family and we will update the media when there is more information. And honestly, that's pretty much all I know right now. I just wanted to kind of address that because like bodies are weird, man. It can happen to anybody. You, you, nobody's fucking safe anytime. Like always check up after yourselves. Always go to the doctor. Always make sure you're good. And what's even scarier about this is that Brownie's probably all good in the first place. It's just a freak thing. And if I hear one person in the comments being like, all right, he was probably vaccinated and they're not vaccinated, get the tinfoil off your hat and shut the fuck up. The human being's life, that's wild. Thank God he's okay. All right, now moving out of the NFL, before we get to the final thing, which is going to be a top five list, I just want to talk to you guys about the new uh, Twitter. For those who can't see it up in the corner, it's no longer the bird. It's now called X. Am I the only one that actually, like, I just... I think Elon Musk is stupid. Like, I don't get it. Everything the guy has done to this app has been terrible. Everything he has envisioned to do is terrible. Yet he just continues to make it worse by the day. Like, what is the end goal here? But more importantly, my question remains is, who are the people who are supporting him and liking his tweets? Like, I honestly think it's bots or something. Because every time this guy tweets anything about X or anything at all about how dog shit Twitter is, he has hundreds of thousands to millions of likes. X, you're telling me 150,000 people saw this. And we're just like, yep, Elon, you're a genius. Like, I don't get it. Like, I swear to you. This man is purposely destroying Twitter and about three quarters of his followers now are bots who just like everything he tweets to make it look like people actually agree with him. Like, I just think he's so idiotic. If I'm being 100% real. Like, what was wrong with Twitter in the first place? Now we can buy verification? It's called X? You're occasionally limiting to how many tweets people can read? Like, what are you doing? And the final segment of this video is going to be the start of a new segment I plan to have in every one of these news videos going forward, and that is me just giving you guys a random top five list every single time. What is today's top five list, you're asking? Well, in honor of summer, it is going to be my top five fair foods. Yep, you know, like a county or a state fair, my top five things that I like to eat every single time I go there. Now, these are in order, so I need you to pay keen attention, but let's begin with number five. So number five, we've got the grilled corn on the cob. Have you ever had this or seen it before? It's elite. One, it's usually the cheapest thing there always because it's corn. And for two, they always have a spray bottle of butter. So you can just hold the thing up and literally douse it in butter to the point where it's dripping. And then you just chow down on it. Now, I'm not going to lie. It's not convenient to eat. It's not convenient to pick corn out of your teeth. It's not convenient to see yourself shitting out corn for a week. But it is convenient to enjoy one of the most tasty cobs of corn you can ever get your hands on and that is county fair corn. 
Up next, we got number four, and that is the classic mini donuts. Another good thing about these is typically they're cheap. Typically, you get a lot of them. And typically, they don't make you shit your pants either. They're just all around a really good, iconic, fair snack. Now, I do want you to understand, though, there are two different types of these. There are types without cinnamon, and there are types with cinnamon. Huge difference. The cinnamon ones are ten times better, even though the normal ones are really good. And also, to add on top of mini donuts, these things kick the absolute life out of funnel cakes. Funnel cakes aren't bad, but they're not that good. All right? Right, number three, give me the Pronto Pup. And no, not a corn dog, a Pronto Pup. There is such a difference there. Corn dog is cornbread. Pronto Pup, basically pancake batter. They're fucking fantastic. They are elite. They're electric. You grab that son of a gun and you take a bottle of mustard and you just do a nice zigzag all the way up it. And you can do ketchup. I don't do ketchup, but you can. And then just like the corn on the cob, I'm not going to make the motion of me eating a Pronto Pup because I'll get memed into death, but you chow down. All right, going on to number two, we have cheese curds, preferably yellow cheese cheese curds. But cheese curds are an iconic staple in my life as well as I think America's life. It's deep fried cheese. Like, yeah, is it unhealthy? Sure, it'll kill you, but it's worth it because it's cheese. I don't remember the last time I've gone to a fair carnivore function and I haven't at least bought in cheese curds or stolen a handful of my friends. It is literally every single time. If you do not eat cheese curds, why are you even going? And that'll bring us to number one, which is the freshly squeezed lemonade out of the lemon stand itself. The best lemonade, hands down, you'll ever have in your life. Now you have to make sure to shake it up because the bottom is literally gonna be straight sugar if you don't, but once you get that thing, swirl it around in your hands and try your hardest to not slam it in like 30 seconds because I cannot preach this enough. It is the most delicious beverage on this planet. I've tried to make it at home, it's not the fucking same. Lemonade is number one. And that is also gonna do it for my top five county fair foods. Make sure to swing by the next video and you'll see another list. All right, everybody, and that is gonna be all for today's video. I really hope you guys are still continuing to enjoy these and you're not getting sick of them yet. Football season is almost here, guys. We're so close. Anyway, show support. You guys know I appreciate it, but with everything I said, I'm gonna hop off and get this edited so you guys can watch it on time. Enjoy your Wednesday, enjoy the rest of your week, and as always, I will see you in the next upload.